Scikit-learn or SKLearn is one of the most popular machine learning packages in Python. The 2022 Kaggle survey showed that SKLearn was reported as the most frequently used machine learning framework. SKLearn does many things well, including the way it streamlines ML workflows. However, today's talk is not about what SKLearn does right. As an undergraduate data science professor, I have a front row seat to see which parts of SKLearn are not intuitive to new learners, and I'd like to share them with you and in some cases explain why they are the way that they are. Regularization is an important part of model building with big data. Regularization techniques encourage simpler models, which can help your model generalize from data it's seen before to data it's never seen. But the best regularization is regularization you know about, and SKLearn came under fire for applying L2 regularization by default in its logistic regression function. Many argue that if a function is called logistic regression, it should do logistic regression, not regularize logistic regression. Many users were not aware of the regularization on their models and therefore may have misinterpreted the results. The developers argue that in many cases, people should be doing regularization, therefore turning it on by default helps put up guardrails to help people have good machine learning practices. This is also compounded by the fact that linear regression does not apply regularization by default, and in fact does not allow regularization at all. Instead, that is handled by two other functions, lasso and ridge. Now that logistic regression has a penalty equals none argument, it's been useful to tell new learners to always use that argument, at least until they fully understand regularization. And don't think that the SKLearn confusion ends with supervised machine learning. Unsupervised machine learning suffers too. One of SKLearn's most useful features is pipelines. Pipelines allow you to build your entire ML workflow into a single object. But because model objects in SKLearn are built with pipelines in mind, they may have some confusing functionality when used alone. A good example of this is unsupervised machine learning algorithms like principal component analysis. By definition, unsupervised algorithms don't have a correct answer or outcome that the model is trying to predict. But PCA takes in and silently ignores an outcome column. Therefore, these two lines of code actually do the same thing. This allows PCA to be used effectively in pipelines, but when used alone, it leads new learners to believe that PCA is somehow considering the outcome values in its computation. In other models they've learned, model.fitxy means that the model is using x to predict y. So why, without a warning, would they think that PCA is any different? Warning new learners, or just starting with pipelines from the beginning, is a great way to ensure that they aren't confused about whether or not unsupervised algorithms take into account an outcome. Speaking of pipelines, let's talk about pre-processing in SKLearn pipelines. Many new data scientists learn the importance of z-scoring, normalization, min-max scaling, and the like. But when using pipelines in SKLearn, new learners may find that some of their features are missing once their pipeline is fit. This comes down to the default in many of SKLearn's column transformer functions, such as make column transformer and column transformer, which have a default value of drop for any untransformed columns. This means that if you want to apply a z-score transformation to your continuous variables, but leave your categorical variables alone, you're at risk for removing the categorical variables from your model altogether. That default drop argument means that any predictor that does not have a transformation applied to it will be removed. Getting new learners in the habit of changing that argument to remainder equals pass through allows untransformed data to still be included in your model. Finally, let's talk about everyone's favorite part of model building, model validation. Model validation is one of the first things new machine learners should learn. But again, SKLearn designs their object defaults based on how many people often use them, which can lead to some confusing defaults for model validation objects. For example, a simple train test split using SKLearn's train test split function shuffles all the rows in the data by default before creating the split. This ensures that if the data frame is arranged in any particular way, such as all the positive cases first, followed by the negatives, there is less of a chance of having imbalanced data in your train and or test sets. Now, hopefully I've convinced you that shuffling data by default is a good idea. 
However, now I've set you up to be disappointed because a similar function kfold does not shuffle by default. Now, the developers argue that this is because people often use kfold for hyperparameter tuning following a train test split, but often new learners use kfold alone when they're first learning it, leading to unshuffled data. It can be difficult for new learners to remember which of their favorite model validation objects do versus do not shuffle, and I haven't found a better solution other than telling them to use shuffle equals true for all of them. SKLearn is an elegant, well-used machine learning framework, but sometimes its quirks can confuse new learners. Preparing new learners for these quirks is the best way to get them started, and hopefully some of the quirks may even be appreciated later on in their career.